Hey everyone, welcome back! Firax Incarnon! It's here! This is an extremely good melee. This is literally Baruch at home. Serene Storm on any Warframe. However, it still fell a bit short of my expectations. Where does it stand in the current meta? Outside of AoE melees, such as Glaives and Exodia Contagion, Firax Wraith and Karnon is the absolute best melee in the game after Inadem at killing hordes of trash fodder. Even better than Cronin Prime, Nami Skyla Prime, and Dual Carries Prime. Compared to Teko Prime, our calculations also put it at roughly 6-8% better. I will get into why a bit later, but against single targets, while it still has quite impressive damage, it is slightly surpassed by the same Cronin Prime, Nami Skyla Prime, and Dual Carries Prime. It is also almost 15% worse than Teko Prime against single lone enemies, such as Acolytes, Demolists. This is because the things that make Firax and Karnon good are a little bit different than the status quo hack and slash meta melees. As always, these weapons are the second generation of Incarnon shipped with the Duviri Paradox update. The only way to get them is from Steel Path Circuit Mode. After clearing the quest and having Steel Path unlocked, you need to pick two of the weapons on rotation to work towards on Steel Path Circuit Mode. Clearing rounds gives points to point tiers. Reach the appropriate point tier and return to this screen to claim your loot. The Incarnon Genesis adapters have a rotating six-week schedule, with the full details in this video's description and pinned comment. If you do not get the adapter for your weapon before a weekly reset, it will not reappear for the next 6 weeks. If you get the adapter, you can use it on your appropriate weapon at Cavalero in the Chrysalith whenever you want. Keep in mind, attaching the adapter requires Duviri open world materials and has unlock requirements on the Incarnon tree perks just like the original Incarnon weapons from the Angels update as well. The Firax Wraith Incarnon Yes, the Wraith, because it still ends up being the best of the variants. This melee has gone from zero to hero. The Incarnon perk tree single-handedly carries this weapon so hard, it's similar to how the Latron was revived as well. However, the Firax Incarnon is still an Incarnon melee. None of the Incarnon melees have particularly innovative or never-before-seen mechanics, such as Latron's armor strip, Fenmore's reverse spool 5 meter and 8 punch through, Felarx's 1 million build options, etc. But if you want another solid melee, feel free to pick this one up. Prados is still king for utility stat sticks, and Inadem is still stronger. In fact, the things that make Firax and Karnon good are very similar to Inadem, except Inadem is better for damage. The perks of Firax and Karnon are a bit more simple than the gun counterparts. All second generation Incarnons only have 4 perk trees instead of 5. Melee Incarnons primarily get stat bumps upon activation. They get a small gimmick, but it's never a full functionality change like how guns get. The plus 100% melee damage on Incarnon works very similar to Enidem's swooping lunge, giving plus 100% mod base damage. However, it's active always with no requirements when Incarnon is active. The plus 25% sprint speed and bullet jump are reminiscent of what Prados had, except Prados had plus 30% and had even more parkour related options as well. That's why I'm saying the Firox doesn't really stand out. The second perk lets you get extra combo chance or extra attack speed. The combo count chance is actually useless on this melee and I'll get into why later when discussing the weapon gimmicks. The damage increase are actually innate damage buffs that adds into the value everything is scaled off of and is a very common perk on all second generation and Karnauts. If you're using the Furax at DPS, you will always be swarmed by enemies in survival. This can easily max out the attack speed perk for an extra plus 50%. It works like a mod. Even against a lone Demolus, the attack speed perk is still better than combo count buff since the third perk has combo pause on the right. No, this does not work with pseudo exalts nor exalts. If you cast either of those two abilities with Firax in your loadout, with this perk active, it instantly wipes all combo. It's just like all other combo pausing melee. It doesn't work. The middle perk gives heavy efficiency, which is also useless due to the gimmick I will once again explain later. The left side perk gives a simple plus 1 meter range. Basically, you're always going to use the range perk unless you're in disruption, at which the combo pause can be helpful for preserving 12 times combo on the way to the Demolus. The fourth perk is the big one. Rightmost perk is useless again because you're either going to take the left perk, which lets this weapon proc slash 40% of the time on impact and scale. This is a main impact weapon or you're spamming slot attacks with a middle perk for raw damage builds. There's literally no reason to ever take the right perk for status here. Weapon Gimmick 
you heavy slam with this weapon when in Incarnon or when activating Incarnon because both heavy attacks and heavy slams can activate it so long as you're above 6 times or 100 combo and it will produce a fire field. Ignore this, it's shit, it doesn't scale with combo, doesn't scale with base damage, it only scales with elementals and faction mods and slam damage. But what might not be apparent is heavy slamming in Incarno mode or when activating Incarnon above 6 times combo grants you a 1 second 90% heavy efficiency buff. The 90% is not tied to the heavy slam itself, but rather is what triggers the buff. This means you can heavy slam instead of heavy attacking to activate Incarnon, retaining all of your combos so that you don't need to build it back up. Also, because this buff lasts 1 second, you can actually get a free 10 times combo heavy punch by chaining another ground heavy attack immediately after the heavy slam. This punch will retain the 90% heavy efficiency. With enough attack speed, you can even chain 2 punches before the buff expires. So you don't need to mod on any heavy efficiency at all on the weapon if you want to use a 12 times combo to punch out an Acolyte, a Demolus, an Eximus, etc. This is also why the heavy efficiency tree perk is useless. About the 4th tree perk granting slide attacks 4 times crit damage. We tested this a lot on stream, all it does is it literally sets your base crit damage value of your weapon to 4 times. Your mods scale off this, because the Furax rate already has a roughly 2.7 times base crit damage, picking this perk just buffs your slide crits by a final 1.5 damage or so. While it is possible to spam slide attacks on Firax and Karnon due to this perk, free plus 100% base damage on Incarnon without requirements, and an innate base damage buff from the second perk tree, the slide hitboxes of Fists are not particularly comfortable. They lack the radial wave pulse that Baruch has on Serene Storm's slide that makes up for the shitty fist spin plus uppercut. You get noticeably more kills per minute on a traditional neutral melee spam setup, but I'll include a build for that later if you want to try. Seismic Palm is the only stance worth using with Firax. This is because it is a busted stance like Sover and Outcast. It has amazing horizontal sweeps, is quick with no end lag, tons of movement freedom, and the third hit even produces a wave that extends the reach of Firax by a flat 1.5 meters after mods. It is only missing the overhead chomp to kill single targets. It has nearly 800% damage per second on this combo, which is some of the highest of any stances in the game. On top of this, unlike other popular melee options, Firax has 0.9 follow through stat. This means every single enemy hit in a swing will retain 90% of the damage from the previous target. If you hit 5 enemies in a single swing, the 5th enemy retains 59% of your original damage. Other meta options, like Cronin and Dual Carries have 0.6 and 0.5 follow through stats respectively. Cronin retains 7.8% damage on the 5th enemy hit, and Dual Carries retains 3.1%. This is one of the biggest reasons on why Firax and Karnon is so good. It can actually take full advantage of its ridiculous hitbox range the stance provides, which is very similar to what Inodem has as well, at point on follow through and daggers and a solid stance with extra force proc slash. After all of this math, how to use the weapon? You pick the impact to slash 4th tree perk and we're on a pure IPS build. You build combo by mashing E because of its amazing hitbox and range. Then you heavy slam above 6 times combo to preserve stacks due to the 90% heavy efficiency buff and the beyond your merry way mashing neutral melee forever. Shoot primers as needed because this is a condition overload build. Then Karnon form lasts 180 seconds on this weapon and makes a distinct sound when it runs out to remind you to heavy slam and activate it again. The slide attack build is barely different. You pick the slide crit damage setup instead on the tree perks and we're on a rock rosa build. You build combo by mashing neutral melee again since it's the best. Then heavy slam and spam slide attacks forever. No primer needed, just keep in mind this setup is carpal tunnel simulator and always has less KPM than the neutral spam slash build. For builds today, it's rather simple. The normal melee spam build looks exactly like a traditional slash melee. This is because we treat our impact procs like slash due to our fourth tree perk, flashing bleed. Firax is 70% impact, but only 40% of that gets converted into slash. If I add the converted impact ratio and the actual slash weight of Firax itself, we get 43% slash weight. This weapon reaches 81% status at 12x combo with weeping wounds, meaning you will proc slash 34.83% of the time. The thing is, fists hit extremely fast and multiple times and these procs will add up quickly. 
Combined with the Incarnon perk that raises the innate damage to 194, the free plus 100% base damage on Incarnon activation, and condition overload stacked on top, this is why Firex is able to make the most of its stance hitbox and point on follow through. The Prime Smite is extremely important to double dip leads for 2.4 times more damage. I would still recommend using one slot for Prime Fury or Quickening if you want to save space, a stacked Arcane Strike on your frame for the smoothest experience, albeit not mandatory. Primed Reach is important to expand our hitbox to 5.25 meters with the third hit reaching nearly 7 meters. The eighth slot is Flex. You have the option to run either Spring Loaded to push the weapon out to at least 7.25 meters pizza slice hitboxes and 9 meters on the third hit, Gladiator Might for much beefier crit damage, and pushing crit chance at 12x combo for 162 to 195% for mostly oranges, or Amalgam Furax body count to make your primer pistol shoot a lot faster. Remember to use Dexterity Arcanes on your pistol and primary if you aren't using the Combo Pause perk or Amalgam Firax Body Counts. It will extend your combo duration to 20 seconds. The other curse build is the Slide Crit build. I don't exactly know why you want to use this. It is worse than Enidem's Raw Corrosive build and a lot more annoying to use as well. You'll be hitting 20 to 30k crits on Steel Path rather regularly per hit. Prime Reach bumps the spin to 5.25 meters, but because the spin attack of fists are asymmetric, this fails to actually reach 5.25 meters around you while hitting slightly beyond 5.25 meters in front. If you spam spins, you only need one attack speed source, which I would recommend sourcing from Arcane Strike to save a slot. We don't need to bring Condition Overload because the entire point of this build is to spin and never need to shoot. Prime Pressure Point combined with Incarnon First Passive grants us plus 265% base damage. On raw corrosive damage with the right Prime Smite, this should one-shot most trash fodder in Steel Path. No Weeping Wounds means we also get a free slot for Gladiator Mons as well. If you want to best out of this setup, I would strongly recommend using a grouping tool such as Air Burst or Pull. The Firax Incarnon is an absolute monstrosity of a weapon that puts it at the top of the meta. The thing is, Incarnon melees are not that interesting. Firax Incarnon is also not our first Incarnon melee either. It also doesn't bring any novel perks that we haven't seen before, except its conversion of impact into slash. And the other Incarnon melees are already slash based to start with. This makes it seem rather unimpressive, despite seeming extremely strong. Jack of all trades, master of all, still doesn't seem to be enough. If you want a really solid melee, feel free to pick this up. This Baruch at home handles a lot like an Enidem, except is just slightly worse in literally every single way. The Enidem isn't that much harder to pick up than the Ferox Incarnon either. Even the Cronin Prime, Nemi Skylar Prime, and Dual Carries Prime are also not that hard to grab. Do what you will, this is what I can show you about our Baruch at home. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with the Duviri update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time!